Welcome everyone to our online service for the full Sunday of Easter this morning. You're very welcome wherever you join us from. I'm joined again by Poppy, who's going to be providing the congregation's responses today. And we continue to celebrate Easter, although we will mark the 75th anniversary of victory in Europe as well, and the sacrifice of those who laid down their lives for our peace that we have today. As ever, please let the office know if there's any way we can help you practically or pass on any prayer requests that you'd like us to pray for. But let's take a moment as we open our hearts before God this morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We sing our first hymn, which will appear on your screens. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. Collect. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. They devoted themselves to the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. 
Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Next Friday is the 75th anniversary of VE Day. The 8th of May 1945 marked the end of the Second World War in Europe as the Allies accepted the unconditional surrender of Nazi Germany. The war continued in the Far East for another three months until VJ Day on the 15th of August. Sadly, many of the celebrations for the 75th anniversary of VE Day have had to be cancelled or deferred because of the present coronavirus pandemic. Celebrations such as the march down the mall, the ringing of church bells, street and community parties. And what about the 20,000 pubs that were eagerly encouraging people to raise a toast to the heroes of the war? Not to mention to all those dancers who had been practicing the Lindy hip hop. In preparation for the 75th anniversary, I asked parishioner Mike Fletcher to research the stories behind the 10 Commonwealth war graves to be found in St. Peter's graveyard. It is a really important piece of work as we learn about those who made the ultimate sacrifice and whose final resting place is here. Like Sergeant John Alfred Entwistle, wireless operator and rear gunner of the RAF. At his funeral, Reverend Harold Barsley also added that John was a chorister and server at St. Peter's. And on this anniversary of VE Day, we remember ordinary people who did extraordinary things. Mike's booklet is available on our website. Speaking on the balcony of Buckingham Palace on VE Day, Winston Churchill declared, the lights went out and the bombs came down, but every man, woman and child in the country had no thought of quitting the struggle. So we came back after long months from the jaws of death and out of the mouth of hell. Acknowledging that, the road across those five years were long and hard. For many on the front line fighting coronavirus today, the jaws of death and the mouth of hell are suitable descriptions of what they face. And we hope and pray that our present Prime Minister will be able to say something similar when we finally emerge from today's pandemic. In this month's Parish Magazine, you can read the reflections and hopes for the future of some parishioners who wrote to mark the 50th anniversary of VE Day in 1995. Bill Hawkins, who at one time was a church warden of St Peter's, wrote how he had got married in 1941 and it was only on VE Day four years later that he and his wife could begin to look forward to a more normal life. He spoke of his high hopes for the future though he added we all know that life was going to be different. A similar sentiment was expressed by the Dean of Coventry Cathedral which had been obliterated by a bomb in November 1940. In a Christmas broadcast just one month later, he said that instead of harboring thoughts of revenge, people should try to make a kinder, simpler, most Christ-childlike sort of world in the days beyond the strife. And what better sentiments and hopes should we have as we emerge from what Churchill described as the jaws of death and the mouth of hell? Will our experience of COVID-19 spur us on to make a kinder, simpler, more Christ-childlike sort of world? Will we keep before us when we have come to what we have come to value and prioritise during restrictions and lockdown? Let's hope we will remember. In the Church's calendar, the 8th of May is the day we commemorate Julianne of Norwich, in the English mystic and spiritual writer who lived around the turn of the 15th century. The Middle Ages were a cruel and dangerous time for ordinary people too, with both wars and life-threatening epidemics to be endured. 
what Julian of Norwich wrote to the struggling people of her day apply equally to us, 600 years later. She wrote, Christ did not say you shall not be troubled, you shall not be travailed, you shall not be diseased, but rather he said, you shall not be overcome. She sought to share the profound assurances that whatever life circumstances, whatever troubles or difficulties or pain, whatever hardships and sufferings, nevertheless, God's nature and God's name is love. And this is borne out in today's gospel, where we are given the picture of Jesus as the Good Shepherd, leading his flock through dangers and difficulties, constantly being a watchful presence with them until they are secure for the night in the safety of the sheepfold. He knows his sheep and his sheep know him. His care and consideration for them, indeed for us, is personal and individual. We're given another picture in the Epistle of Max, that of the early followers of Jesus cooperating together as a group, caring for one another, acting in solidarity with each other, working together for the good of all, with glad and generous hearts. I want us to hold on to those two pictures for they have much to encourage us as we face the challenges of the future. On VE Day in 1945, Churchill told the crowds, we must begin the task of rebuilding our hearth and home and turn ourselves to fulfill our duty to countrymen and women. A similar task that will face us in the days and months ahead as we begin to emerge out of the present pandemic. And we must not become complacent now in our care for others. For the edge of loneliness has become very sharp in these past weeks. Let us all continue to seek ways of showing God's love to others. Let us be ordinary people who do extraordinary things from our place of isolation. We all know that life is going to be different. But may the sacrifice that so many have made make our world more Christ-like. The disciples learned quickly that strength lay in mutual care and unity, and also that they were upheld and strengthened for all that they had to do by the shepherd-like presence and love of the risen Jesus, a presence and love offered to us all. Amen. Let us pray. At a time of turmoil in the world when decisions are being made and their life or death decisions upon people that our leaders may not see or imagine, we pray for a sense of peace when those decisions are being made. And we ask, Lord, that your powerful whisper may be heard amid any egos and self-interest. We pray for our leaders' strength and health also at this time. Amen. Let us take a moment and give thanks for the courageous service and sacrifice of those who brought peace to Europe and for the example that they have given us. Lord, we give you thanks for those who work for peace and liberty throughout the world, for the armed forces of the Crown and for all who strive to bring an end to injustice and oppression. We pray for the young people of our own day and for all who will shape the future of this nation that they may be inspired by those who have gone before them to serve as they have been served, each in their own way. Amen. Lord, we pray that when we aren't sure, you would help us to be calm. When information comes from all sides, correct and not, would you help us to discern well? When fear makes it hard to breathe and anxiety seems to be the order of the day, would you slow us down? Would you help us to reach out with our hearts when we can't touch with our hands? Help us to be socially connected when we have to be socially distant. And help us to love as perfectly as we can, to show that perfect love casts out all fear. Amen. Lord, within your embrace we find comfort and wholeness. And we bring before you those who are weak or struggling with physical, mental or spiritual health. 
Lord, you are the great healer, and we pray for healing of mind and body for those who we now name before you. We remember especially Amanda, Barbara, Eileen, Graham, Mike, and those who we name in the silence of our hearts. We ask you to be, in, be near those who have lo lost loved ones at this time, and we pray especially for the family and friends of Yvonne Hilditch, Margaret Forrest, and Eddie Griffith. Amen. Lord, would you free us as your own people to sing your praise in the work of our everyday lives, in those comings and goings of our simple and complicated living. Make us instruments of your peace and love in weary days amongst weary people. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God who was and is and is to come, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness and firstborn of the dead. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you, and I will trust in you, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will guides my ways in righteousness, and he anoints my head with oil, and my cup is overflows with joy, I feast on his blood. I will trust in His and I will trust in You for Your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy at all times and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in us the image of your glory. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven can resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and all the powers of creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God, God of power and might, heaven and, and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night before Jesus died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. At the end of supper, taking a cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of a new promise, which is shed for you all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, to remember me. And so, Father, pour out your Holy Spirit on us as we offer before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. And bring us at last with St Peter and all the saints to that vision of the eternal splendour for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, with a song of everlasting praise. Blessing, Blessing and, and honour and, and glory and, and power be yours, yours for ever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we, we are, are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life, grant us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen.
our final blessing. May God, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, shine in you and rest upon all those you love, today and always. Amen. Amen.